27. Uh -huh. um, just in relation to um, the kidney regeneration aspect, let's mm -hmm. say. And um, what I was wondering was, um, first of all, what would, like, when would you might detect that? Or what would the patient come with, let's say, if you were to detect that? And um, how does it relate then to the uh, adrenal reflex? Okay. Or, you know, the, that regen you talk about regenerative capacity of the kidneys. Yeah. So it's, Okay, so first of all, <clears throat> the, the adrenal reflex was a lot more popular, say, 15, 20 years ago. Okay, and the adrenal reflex, you know, be, below kidney 16, sort of changed, um, transformed a little bit, and became more kidney 2 pressure pain, which, by the way, is more common on the right, especially on women. Okay, so, or, you know, now it's hard to know like exactly how, how and why these things happen. So it might be that originally, you know, kidney 16 was, a th you know, below kidney 16 was a thing that one was looking for. And then, you know, and you develop this ideology of adrenal, you know, so you have in your mind, there is this treatment called adrenal treatment of kidney six and 27, or, you know, and then, you know, the fire points come into play. So then you say, but if kidney two is painful, you do kidney seven and kidney 10 plus 27. And then one day you sort of go, gee, not a lot of people are showing kidney 16 anymore, but a fair amount of people are showing kidney two. Okay. So you're kind of replacing your your definition of adrenal treatment, of, of adrenal diagnosis from below kidney 16 to, yes, it can include that, but may not have that, but does have kidney two pressure pain. Mm -hmm. okay. So, you know, so, so it's hard to know how much of it is ideological that once you got kind of into the adrenal terminology, <clears throat> it's there. Now, at this point, I would say, and this will, can change in, in the next five, 10 years, you know, who knows what, where it will be. But at this point, what you see is you see a lot of people with right side stomach 26, 27 that are not, you know, there's plenty of them that are digestive problems. Okay. Lung and immune are, well, actually immune is fairly common. So originally stomach 26, 27 was kind of considered, you know, the primary um, people that had it you know, when I started, were basically people with appendix or issues. So you can call it digestive, but they didn't really, it was really people who clearly had an appendix removal or appendicitis or something much more clear. And over the years, you know, you started seeing more and more of this, right stomach 26, 27, not related to people, people without a history of appendix. And, you know, you, you started saying, oh, well, actually it's more digestive, et cetera, et cetera. And then suddenly you're starting to get people who have that, that are not, don't have physical digestion issues. Um, and, but, and, and the thing that seems to resolve it is kidney, usually kidney seven, might be kidney nine. It does, when that comes, it does often come with a kidney two pressure pain. So, can I say it's adrenal? Well, yeah, because, you know, if you're looking at this, at the system and you're saying, are there, you know, does this system have a kidney treatment per se? Not really. You know, we, you know, because if you say kidney treatment, it's, it's a kidney point, right? Generally speaking, we, we would assume that. And then generally speaking, we tend to add kidney 27 to it just because it's like it complements and creates the, the, the adrenal situation. So um, is it partially because the Chinese kidney being so incredibly important is really, um, you know, is, is possibly in, in, in our modern language might translate a little easier to adrenal? Probably, you know, and once you have this, you know, you have, you know, I'm criticizing myself as I'm saying that, right? You know, because once you have this idea, adrenal, and you fixed it, you're going to go back to it. So, um, so I think, 
can I say that right side kidney 26, 27 indicates adrenal? No. I think it indicates, but it's similar enough. It indicates some sort of incapacity to, to mobilize one's resources and, and push forward. So it's, it, you know, the idea is that it, it lies between the, the lower dantian, which represents the kidney, and to, towards the right, representing wood. So it's that transition from winter to spring, if you like. The transition from, from um, full yin, full contractility, to the yang from within the yin, like the, the wood, the sprout that pushes out. That seed, that seed of that pushing still has to exist within the water element, within the kidneys. Kidneys can't just store and freeze. You know, because if they're just storing and freezing, then there's no more cycle of five elements. There's no regeneration. You know, it's not a cycle, it's an end. So the kidney has to, within it, have the ability to, to restart also. That's why, you know, there's kidney fire as well. So that's my understanding of, you know, so, so you know, like why stomach 26, 27, hard to say. No, the, you know, I mean, yeah, I can say, you know, there's a geometric pattern to it. Fine, that's cute. Um, be, because the cycles, the, the, if you're looking at the five elements in the abdomen, so the heart is at the top. And then, you know, yes, you can say that Oketsu reflects more liver. I mean, there is, there is an argument to be made that the liver will reflect on the left side and the lungs on the right side, which we do say that stomach 26, 27, for example, reflects the lungs as well in long-term lung problems, not acute lung problems. But there's another way to look at it if you're looking at it as the heart is at the top and the kidneys at the bottom. And then the natural cycle of the body is to go down on the left and up on the right, which will be the cycle um, of, of the five elements. And it's down on the left because that is the natural movement of the intestines. If you're looking at, at the, how the abdomen moves, there's an ascending colon on the right side and a descending colon on the left. So that says that the circle is gonna be that way. So between the, the water element and the fire element, on the right side is gonna be wood and from the fire going down towards the kidney to towards water will be the metal element with the earth being in the center is the idea. Um, and therefore, the in-between, the right, let's say spleen 15, right, or stomach 25, right, um, and rank four would be stomach 26, 27. So that will be like the, the way to explain it geometrically. geometrically. I don't know if the body really um, <laughs> decides to follow a geometric shape or not. I do think it's related somehow to digestion because I think, I, this is to me personally, I think that some of this um, regeneration has to do, you know, the kidney has to store, okay? It stores the essence. There has to be this understanding what, when, when, the, when the roots of a plant are going dormant. If they, I don't know if they, the plant is going dormant. I don't know if the roots are fully going dormant because I think the roots are still active. The plant somehow knows that spring is going to come. It doesn't know the date, okay? It doesn't say March 21st or something, but the plant somehow has, we have to have a knowledge or hope that spring is coming that there will be another cycle. And I think that the reason, so it's about the ability to digest the world. So it is related to, it's about the ability to take in the world and maintain my storage capacity because I am digesting the world properly as opposed to falling into hopelessness. Okay. There are times when people, when, when we sort of like go, can't, can't deal with this, there, there's no tomorrow. That's when that stomach, now I'm exaggerating this a little bit, but that's, I think that's when the stomach 26, 27 shows more clearly on people. That's why I'm a little reluctant to say, yes, it's adrenal. And that's why I'm calling it something different. It's the kidney's ability to regenerate. It, it's, a, it's a certain lack of hope 
or lack of capacity to to move forward, to 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 generate one's energy resources and move it forward. And that is related to digestion as well. You know, and that's why I think the two do coincide. I mean, but that's very philosophical. And, you know, I don't have like a real good um, physical, I can't say, okay, the, you know, artery that feeds the adrenal, you know, no, it's not real. The, there is nothing that I'm aware of physiologically, like as far as like if, if you did a dissection that will show in star 26, 27. There is something that will show around kidney 16 because the, uh, the arteries that move into the, the, the renal arteries or, or the veins that move back into the vena cava will, will reflect close to there. So even the kidneys themselves, I mean, the adrenals are a little higher than, than kidney 16 anyway, but the, kid, the kidneys are just about at that level, although they tend to go higher as well. But the, but the blood supply to the kidney does move towards the center line. Does, does that make sense? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. You know, um, I think the thing about these ideas is you play with them with patients. You just go, this is an option, let me see. And now there is the, there's the very clear option of just, you test all the points. You go, okay, stomach 26, 27 on the right can mean number one, lung, number two, immunity, number three, digestion or appendix. Number four, it could be a pelvic shift, which is relatively rare. And number five, um, kidney regenerative capacity. So I check a lung, I check lung eight or lung five, I check immune point, I check spleen nine, I check other digestive options. Okay. And then I, uh, I press on the sacroiliac ligaments. Okay. And then I check kidney. Mm -hmm. And then you know, here you are, you, you basically, you know, I mean, in the digestive options, you have more than just spleen nine, but you know, you have small intestine points, you, you do have more options, but, um, but you, you know, you, you, you can say, I don't really know what it is, but I, I'm told that these are the five, I should go down the, the flow chart. <laughs> yeah. So there is some, you know, some days we don't know why, you know, you know, why it is. Yeah. Does that make sense? It does. Yeah. And it would generally the show kidney two, you said, yeah. They will often show kidney two as well, not always. Yeah. Not always. And again, you know, it's like yes, with pericardium and, and um, kidney, especially fire point tends to be very significant. So if there is a fire point, you know, kidney two or pericardium eight, I will tend to do metal water, but not always. And it's kind of surprising how sometimes, the, for example, kidney nine will undo the kidney two pressure point and will be more successful than kidney seven <clears throat> in, a, in a variety of you know, situations and, and clear more things in the abdomen, all depending on what else is, who the patient is and what else is going on. But, but the, the primary option, if there is kidney two pressure pain, will be kidney seven and kidney 10. Yeah. Great. So, okay, thank you. You're welcome. Anything else? Um, maybe just a question generally regarding liver, Abby. Um, mm -hmm. If somebody um, doesn't really show any liver <clears throat> uh, reflexes, but they have um, a lot of, you know, those dark liver spots on the body, would that prompt you to do anything, even if they're not showing any particular reflex? Okay. Maybe, maybe not. Well, there's two things. First of all, I'm, I was, I've been told, but I don't have um, personal understanding of it. I, you know, that actually that those, those spots that we call liver spots are maybe not liver spots, that liver spots are supposed to be a particular color. I, you know, I, I don't know, but, but some MD has, has told me that, um, that actually it's a misconception. So that might be true. My, as I understanding the spots that they, that there are supposed to be, you know, those red spots, there are supposed to be liver spots. And I, I can't remember if they're supposed to be more brown or, you know, whatever it is. Um, but my understanding that those spots are actually um, 
these are this is hormonal accumulation that's not been properly uh, broken down in the liver. So it may not represent liver per se. It may actually represent a hormone an, an overproduction of, of hormones or some hormonal imbalance rather than the liver breakdown component of that cycle. So I'm just, you know, to say those spots indicate liver, that doesn't, you know, I, I wouldn't, you know, that, to take that as a pathognomonic, as an absolute, abs definitely not. To take it into consideration, so what happens is you're saying, hmm, it's a little bit like the person who comes with, with a very round waist, you know, they're very big and rounded and, and skinny, skinny legs. That's the so-called apple shape, and that suggests a liver constitution. Okay. By the way, that to me would suggest liver much more than the, than the spots, but that that's, might be just me. So I'm considering that. Now, I'm not finding liver. Now, the other thing is a lot of people who do have liver issues will only show it on the back. It's not uncommon. So, But just because they didn't show right side um, under the ribs or liver 14, and or C3 on the right side, et cetera. They didn't show any of the official textbook presentations of liver. But they have, say, the liver spots or they have the apple-shaped body. I'm starting to look for points to treat. And I'm saying, okay, maybe they are liver in some manner or another. And by the way, pressing on UB1718 on the back while they're, they're up, it's, it's not so easy. So I test 11 is very easy to reach. T5 is very easy to reach, but um, because you have the spine to guide you, but you know, to, to check the liver reflex on the back is not so simple um, or easy rather. So um, I'm saying, I wonder if they're liver and then I'm checking, I'm going, you know, let me, you know, now it's going to depend on what what they're coming with, what the other symptoms are, what the other findings are, what the medical history is. So for example, if they have rapid pulse, you know, then liver one would be a, a point that I would look into. If they have skin problems, it's either liver one or liver five. If they have cysts, it will be a liver eight. There, there are different reasons why I, I would migrate towards a particular liver point or liver treatment. So I'm just as I'm starting to, to try and formulate my the points I'm going to use and check them against reflexes, liver is going to come up simply because, by the way, this person is an apple shape. By the way, this person has these spots. And I will dismiss it if, if, the, if the liver points don't release anything. Then, okay, so they have the spots and they're not liver. You know, it's it's okay. Or they do have an apple shape, but they're not liver. And sometimes I would have dismissed it on the front. And then when it comes to the back, I'm discovering, oh, by the way, right side stomach, um, bladder 1718 area shows. Then I'm going, huh, okay. And it happens, it, it happens often enough that someone is going to be, you know, totally blank liver wise on the front, but they will show it on the back. I don't know why why it's like that. Um, well, I guess it, it may have to do with the shape of the ribs because it's all about the, the liver pushing on the ribs or something. So it might, for whatever reason, affecting something on, on the paraspinals more, more clearly. Um, and then, so at that point I do left UB35 and, and I needle T7 and T9 area, whatever, but, and then I remember, okay, next time remember to check liver options more clearly on the front, even though I'm not confirming them against the liver reflex. I'm confirming them against whatever other reflexes they have. Okay. Does that make sense? It does, yeah. You know, so I, I wouldn't get caught with any of these things, including, for example, somebody who has pressure pain under the ribs and you try all your liver treatments and none of them work, you know, and you go, you have under the ribs on the right side, you don't have anything on the left side, must be liver. Well, actually, no, it could be that they have a tight diaphragm and that for whatever reason it is, it's, it tends to show more on the right and doesn't show show as much on the left. It it can anything can I mean just because we say a reflex is supposed to say this doesn't mean it really is. Yeah. You know that the next step is to confirm 
my diagnosis by trying to treat it that way. And, and of course, and because when I'm confirming my, my, my points, trying to confirm my diagnosis, I'm trying to more than just confirm my diagnosis, I'm trying to confirm that those points are effective, not just for that reflex, but they're effective for everything else, that there's a cascading effect. So I can actually take the middleman out of this, the middleman being the reflex. Okay, it's not exactly middleman because the, it, it's also the announcer in this case. You know, it, it's announcing to me, use these points. But at some, you know, the, the example you're saying is, I, I've announced it without the reflex. Go through the same exact process. You just don't have the same middleman. You know, and check it against all your other reflex, everything else you've found. you checking the reflexes simply to make sure this is a point that's affecting the body in real time. That, that's all. Thank you. And just in relation to fatty liver treatment. <clears throat> fatty liver, okay. Fatty liver. Um, apart from the um, stomach 25, isn't it, and liver 13? Okay. Um, yeah. Is there Sorry. any other? <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> is there any other dietary um, things that you found to be good to lower somebody's cholesterol level? You know the way that you say that apple cider vinegar, apples. I think generally do as well. Okay. Uh, I was, yeah. I, I don't know about. It. I don't. I can't say much about apple cider vinegar. Um, because I don't have, I, I don't really know. Um, so, okay, so ho hold on one second. So just in terms of points, what you can still use. Um, and again, you know, are we talking about reducing fatty liver or reducing cholesterol dietarily? Cholesterol, okay. but I was, re I was relating it to fatty liver, is that? Yeah, yeah, no, no, they often are, they, it's fine. <coughs> Excuse yeah. me. Okay, so, um, Okay, so actually Camille will, can probably talk much more about the diet part th than I can. Um, but I would say, so in terms of points, I would also, I would include in the fatty liver treatment, liver eight. Sorry, liver? Liver eight. Right, okay. Okay, so remember liver eight is the point that I consider to be the cyst over accumulation point. When things accumulated, that's your liver eight. And liver eight should have a little, like a bump, like a nodule, like, you know, like an accumulation itself. There should be something there. Fatty liver is an accumulation. It's like the, the liver itself is, is a little cystic <laughs> kind of thing, you know? So it's the same thing. So I would add the liver eight. The other thing is with a person that's very heavy. Oh, the other, okay. Okay, let's go with the person who's very heavy first. The person who's very heavy, right stomach 25 and um, right liver 13 are not the whole story. Okay, and the reason why is because when somebody's very big, okay, every needle you put in is basically trying to push the connective to the fascia against a massive amount of um, resistance of the fat. So you basically need more needles. Every needle that you do, you want to shuttle it. So for example, if you're doing um, spleen six on, on a very large person, you may want to add spleen 10 to sort of move it along. <laughs> okay, because the, the effect of the needle is, you know, it, it, it doesn't go very far. So, and you know, if you're doing kidney points, you might add inner yin which is on the kidney channel to, to, to push the, the needle. So in order to push stomach 25 and, and liver 13, you, you, don't, you can't push it further along the line towards the liver because liver 13 is just about at the liver. You know, you, you kind of don't have a lot of options. So you're starting on the left side. Okay? So you, you, you're starting the wave before right stomach 25. So you're starting it with left gallbladder 26, left stomach 26, 27, when six, then you do the stomach. So, so you kind of started like pushing, okay? And then you do the stomach 25, liver 13. So the stomach 25, liver 13 are the essentials. And if the person is not, you know, up to chubby, 
you know, that's enough. But if they're more than chubby and they're actually obese, that may not, you know, doing the essential part of it is not going to be enough. Okay. And then liver aid is, is very commonly another one. And then you can also conceivably do something on the scalp, you know, you take the right side, you know, do 20 and go towards the gallbladder channel and find the hole. Um, that's often another big one um, for them. Um, and then on the back, I would look at UB35. And I would often look for pressure pain on the right, not just right T7, T9 area, but also on right um, uh, bladder 43 area. It's quite common for most people to have that. Um, yeah, diet-wise, you know, supposedly, uh, and I haven't found that that's totally true, but it might be that I, that, that I, I don't, you know, that I'm giving people the, well, first of all, you never know what people are really eating. Supposedly, high, high amounts of mushrooms, because mushrooms are scavengers, so they'll... Um, they'll eat up the, the excess fat is, is the idea behind it. Um, I haven't found, you know, but again, I think that it's very hard for people to eat large amounts of mushrooms and maybe what they really should be doing is, is getting mushroom extracts. Yeah. You know, and also I think that for most people, I, I, I mean, in a sense of all mushrooms are, are quote unquote scavengers, I think that's true, no matter what. Um, and in, in that sense, garlic is the other big one for cholesterol, mm. in, in my understanding. But um, the thing about the, um, the the mushrooms is that for most most people, when you tell them mushrooms, will probably go for button mushrooms, you know, like the, the stuff that most people in the West will have, which I think are, you know, they, they, you know mushrooms are mushrooms and, and they will like collect whatever's around them. But I think that, you know, um, say shiitakes, I mean, there are other mushrooms that's, that tend to be stronger and have stronger immunological um, effects mm -hmm. um, th than, than the mushrooms that most people use in, in their cooking, you know, when they make a mushroom omelet or whatever they, they make. Um, so it, it might be that there is a misrepresentation of what mushrooms are for people, and it might just be that maybe they really just need to get do the mushrooms, you know, uh, medicinally, quote unquote, meaning powdered, you know, not 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 the hallucinogenic ones, but you know, just do it in a more concentrated uh, form. Then you can get to eating. I, I'm not sure. Yeah, I think there's some book, isn't there, written about mushrooms? Yeah. Oh, I'm sure there's tons of books on mushrooms, <laughs> <laughs> but medicinal. Um, properties of some, I think, yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, mushrooms are a very popular thing. But yeah, I mean, I would just, uh, you know, I, I'm sure there's tons of dietary advice for cholesterol, and I'm sure that m most of it is stuff that people find hard to follow. Yeah. You know, because yeah. that's just the nature of diets. But, you know, Camille, do you have any... Um, Easy, nice and easy to implement advice for cholesterol dietary wise. Well, hawthorn berry is very common. Yes. Yeah. Um, That's not exactly a food. It's super, super sour. So that will be, a, you want it in pills. It, that'll be a supplement because hawthorns are really sour beyond, well, beyond my capacity at least. But, but that oh, is a that is a yeah. Chinese herb. Yes, yes, yeah. it's very sour. It's very astringent. The Chinese usually make it into a very sweet candy that I think is really not as counterproductive. But um, they have it in they have it in in pills in every health food store. You can find Hawthorne supplements because it's very popular for heart conditions. Yeah, yeah, and yeah for cholesterol. absolutely. So it's not a problem to get, but it will be a supplement. Yeah. Okay. And then dietarily. I mean, one of the most important things, is, I mean, you have dietary cholesterol and you have the self-made cholesterol. And, and one of the things that's so important is to help people to realize that the cholesterol is actually good and functional in the body, that it's the top of the entire hormone chain, that they can't make hormones without it. Um, it it helps your cell wall integrity. It helps protect your nerves. 
um, um, you know, it, it has so many important things. And so genetically speaking, there are people who really crave the fat and they really need it. And I've seen this in genetic analysis. Like I had one patient who would actually have a, a tablespoon of duck fat every day. And she said, I feel so much better when I do that. And, and so, you know, you see this with people where they just, they crave cream, they crave butter. And so I just very strongly recommend to these people, rather than denying them, um, is to really help encourage them to have the plant-based fats to say, look, this is terrible for your heart um, to keep on doing this, but, but your desire for fats is very, very real. So, you know, I just have them generously use olive oil, generously use seeds and, and the, 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 some of the lower saturated nuts. Um, but, but, you know, their, their desire for fats is very, very real. You just want to get them off the, the meat fat and the dairy fat, the, the, the animal fat. Mm -hmm. um, and believe it or not, once they have permission to indulge themselves in the good fats, um, they're, they're, oh, well, you know, the brain the brain by volume is 12% fat. So if, and for some people, again, genetically, they use it differently. So they might need a bit more, but until, until that, that desire is indulged in the brain, the person will keep eating and eating and eating. And unfortunately, you know, they're oftentimes in the process of getting fats, they're getting a lot of sugar and other things that they shouldn't have. So so once they have permission to indulge um, and give themselves fats, um, you know, like one thing, one thing I also encourage is, you know, I'll get, I'll have them get, you know, a very high quality mayonnaise without a lot of additives and use that as salad dressings and say, you know, just enjoy these on your vegetables. And once, once people get in the habit of having a lot more fiber and vegetables, and the good fats, oftentimes, um, you know, they they lose interest in in the bacon and the cheese and everything else. The other thing is to, you know, at least in the United States, people people think of cheese as a protein, and I point out to them that the cheese is is seventy percent butter fat, and so I let them know that a portion of cheese is just just a tiny bit above a portion of butter. And people here don't realize it. They'll sit down and eat, you know, six ounces of cheese in a meal. Um, you know, they'll have it as a pizza or a grilled cheese sandwich or something like that. And and so I just I just enlighten them a little bit about portion control because almost every patient I see that has high cholesterol, um, the the biggest indulgence is the misuse of cheese. Yeah. I suppose avocado would probably be a good one as well. Yes, avocado, absolutely. That's on the list too. Yes, yes. But but they should get lots of oils, you know, and I encourage them to think of, you know, Mediterranean diet, Middle Eastern diet, where they have no compunction about just drizzling olive oil over everything. And, and really, there are some people that genetically need this. And... Um, and actually, the reason I'm clued into this is I'm one of these people. And I, you know, if I, if I'm properly cooking for myself and, and, you know, not running around busy eating out and I'm, I'm getting the proper amount of oil, I start to lose a tremendous amount of weight. So um, um, I've actually never had um, high cholesterol. In fact, I've had dangerously low cholesterol. I've had like a total cholesterol of as low as 67. So I've spent years having to work to keep my fat level up. And, and there are people like that. But for me, it does manifest as, as you know, issues with neurology, with, with, with um, cell wall integrity. I mean, I really see it. I really see it. And, and I feel fabulous when I'm being more conscious of my fats. 
So um, that that's probably one of the biggest things I can say dietetically. And then, you know, there are very besides besides the hawthorn, there are specific Chinese herbs for it. Zhui uh, Mingzi, uh, cassia seed, is another one. Um, um, what am I, what else? Um, those are the ones that are coming to mind. I'm sorry, I'm very sleepy this morning. It's raining, it's dark, and oh. cold. so um, 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 those are the two that are mostly coming to mind. But but we could easily get get a list on, online. Um, um, so so you know there there are in, uh, you know I mean at least here most of the herb companies produce a cholesterol formula, so um, we could get that pretty readily available. Um, but I find that the diet helps tremendously um, um, because you, you do want to get, get them off the, the sugary fats, um, the, the ice cream and everything else. Well, you actually want to get them off sugar as much as possible also because part of the cholesterol problem is that because of, because it's involved in hormonal cycles, because from cholesterol, you make other hormones, but you're not, it's not just estrogen, progesterone, testosterone type thing. It's also uh, adrenal hormones and it's, you know, anything hormonal is going to affect it. So if they're hormonally affected through the pancreas, you know, with sugar, they're going to slow down their ability to metabolize um, hormones otherwise. You know, it's going to affect everything else. And also, you know, so in the same way, ad adrenal issues are going to affect them. You know, because if they're constantly stressed out, then they're constantly producing a demand for cholesterol to, to be able to, but they're also reducing the capacity of the cholesterol to transform in, into sex hormones. So it, it's kind of, you know, you, you, you want to look at at a, at a larger picture in terms of yeah there is definitely diet in terms of sugar but there's also you know in terms of what are their adrenals doing for example so it, it it's not a it's it's not just mm -hmm. what they're eating it's also like what are they doing lifestyle wise and of course for different people d different things are going to make a difference for some people it really is dietary you know yeah if they're eating you know bacon cheeseburgers all day and that's all they're eating it's you know yeah it's not going to be very helpful for their cholesterol but there are people who eat no fat at all and have high cholesterol for example you know and there are people for example all they have to do is i had a patient who um all she had to do was take, you know, because she was exercising like hell. You know, she was one of those um, people who like do serious weightlifting um, and swimming and stuff. I mean, you know, she was like, I don't know if she was quite an Olympic style situation. And she had high cholesterol and the doctors wanted to, I mean, she had really high cholesterol and, you know, the, they, she was in her 30s. And they wanted her to uh, take statins. And she said, no way. She went vegan. And that reduced it to some extent, but not, not enough for the doctors to, to be impressed, so to speak. And then the next stage was, um, I suggested to her to take flax seeds. And she did. Um, and that reduced, her, for her, it reduced her cholesterol below 200. Absolutely. And that's Which, the same, the same concept that the well, flaxseed oil nourishes the brain. Yeah. And so you, you feel a sense of satisfaction. And so I often it. will have people do vegetable smoothies, mm -hmm. not, not, not juices, because I like the fiber, but mm -hmm. vegetable smoothies. And then I put a, you know, have them put a tablespoon or two um, of flax oil into it. And, um, and that's tremendously helpful on many, many levels for, for hormone building and all kinds of things. So it's interesting with the flax seeds, it's a story for her particular thing, because I didn't know that at the time, this is like 20 years ago. Um, so um, she was taking the flax seeds as R, you know, because I said to her, why buy the oil? You have to put it in the freezer and it's only good for three weeks and blah, 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 blah. You know, you can go to Rainbow and, you know, it, it, it's like less than a dollar a pound for, for, for flax seeds. And um, 
so she and the thing is, and and you know I think I probably did tell her to put in a coffee grinder and grind it but I she didn't um, and yet her cholesterol went down so years later some naturopath said to me you know it wasn't really the flax seeds for you know it wasn't really so much the flax seeds because she probably wasn't getting the flax seed oil you know, it wasn't, you know, because she wasn't able to digest it because they weren't broken down. It was probably that the seeds were acting like very strong fiber. Um, so it's kind of interesting that you can have it from both aspects. And again, you know, just to say, you know, the theory is, you know, the official side of flax seeds is you're supposed to either grind them or like Camille says, get the oil. But, you know, the oil is like a health a lot more expensive. And that's why I suggest to people, you know, just do the, the, the seeds. But it's interesting that here is someone who did it, quote unquote, did it the wrong way. And it's, it, it just went through a different route. And I don't know, there was nothing that I could tell at the time that was wrong with her digestive system. It wasn't like she was constipated or something. But the flax seeds are the thing that clearly made a huge mark um, and, and got the doctors, the MDs off her case. Um, you know because she was she was on a she was on a sports team at stanford so it, you know it was important you know it, it wasn't like she was going to her doctor on her own that there was a monitoring phenomenon there um and almost like a force um you know that they, they had an imposition capacity you know she was like a little bit of a property in a sense um so all i can say is that flax seeds seem to work whether they're ground or whether they're not ground and whether it's because of fiber or whether it's because of hormonal effects or both i'll never know with this particular person i think that each person's root you know metabolic root is somewhat different yeah. um, so it's worth but yeah and for some people fiber is like super you know it's, it's really important yeah. you know so yeah, it's I, a, I grind um flax seeds <clears throat> for brown bread Mm -hmm. um, they say it's equivalent to a, like an egg replacer in, oh. in breads. If you soak it in water, mm -hmm. it oh. kind of goes maybe for 10 minutes before you'd, <clears throat> well, I put it into bread, but um, it kind of goes jelly sort of like, a little bit like sticky and, and it has the function, of, it replaces the function of an egg if you didn't want to use dairy. Ah, oh, okay. I've never made bread with egg unless it's like more a cake bread. Yeah. Um, bread bread I, I just make with you know well, I haven't made bread in years now but um, I just do it with flour and, and water and yeast but um, yeah. but yeah it's like for banana bread or something I guess well, our, our we eat a lot of um, kind of like a brown soda bread in Ireland it's kind mm -hmm. of like traditional bread oh I love Irish soda bread <laughs> <laughs> so that would be um, that's what I generally put it into um, just <clears throat> grind it like a tablespoon or so and add the water. See, so now you, you can tell your patients to just make Irish soda bread oh, with, yeah. without the egg, but with the egg with the flaxseed replacer. <laughs> that's yeah. very cool. Yeah. Yeah, I guess the other thing is that people with cholesterol often do this whole business about eating egg whites and not egg yellows and stuff. And I, I'm pretty convinced that that doesn't do anything. Yeah. Uh, I don't know no, because don't there's lecithin in the egg yolk and it really has more to do with how the eggs are raised because oh. free range eggs that get the where the hens get lots of exercise mm -hmm. um the ratio of lecithin to cholesterol is much better than than the factory farmed ones where they sit in tiny cages and never mm -hmm. move in their entire lives so you can so let me ask you so, so that's you, documented by the way that's oh, documented that the oh. lecithin cholesterol ratio is better on free range eggs right the way so, the way hens are supposed to live yeah well yeah <laughs> that's uh, so let me ask you something about lecithin so does because lecithin is an emulsifier so taking say soy lecithin or, or there's lecithin from um various seeds i believe that you can get yes it. well i usually recommend useful? sunflower lecithin because okay, that's the one I thought about. because with the soy so much of it is genetically modified right. now but but there is one brand that that you can get readily available that's a non-gmo soy but mm -hmm. generally speaking i i recommend sunflower lecithin and that's actually a very very good re remedy um yeah. thank you another one by the way is artichoke leaf 
Mm-hmm. Um, so they could just eat some artichokes. I don't know if those are available in Ireland, but we grow them right here near where I live in California. So that's a good remedy, but you can get that in pill form too. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the real stopgap, if, if the cholesterol is really high and you must, must bring it down is red yeast rice, which yeah. is, yeah. which is where statins yes. uh, were originally derived. But it's so strong that it's so similar to a statin that you do have to prescribe CoQ10 at the same time, because one of the one of the fallacies about statins and cholesterol is that in reality, the statins um, take away CoQ10. So statins actually harm the heart more than they help. Mm -hmm. I will say that that the red yeast rice is is pretty disgusting to eat oh well you I, I would take it, it as a capsule form in fact in yeah. fact we <laughs> could even get it in capsule form together with the coq10 oh, so oh. it they automatically get the replenishment of the coq10 when they're taking the red yeast rice and that's that's the one i carry in my and the only egg. and the only fat you have to worry about is the gelatin <laughs> of the capsule yeah. yeah, I mean, and then the other thing is to look at the root cause of why their body is engaging cholesterol so much, either why they're craving it or why their body is making so much of it and treat that because maybe you do want to do acupuncture for the hormones or maybe you do want to treat their neurology or that sort of thing. Yeah, this particular person I'm thinking about, she is quite athletic. She does a lot of, you know, she keeps really fit. Yes. And, um, but I think she um, consumes a lot of carbs. Well, you know, Your that problem. may be because her brain is unsatisfied. And if she ate more of the good fats, she might, she might crave less of the carbs. I mean, I don't know, maybe she's burning the carbs and maybe she, her carb, you know, maybe Part of it yeah. is she just needs to shift from simple sugars more to complex carbs. Maybe she needs to eat lower glycemic in, in, index carbs. That could be a possible shift. But, you know, may, maybe maybe her body is needing it. But it, it, also, it also, you know, if she's very athletic and she's, she's of... Um, menstruating age you know she may she may not have enough um cholesterol in her diet to um to have proper hormones i don't know is she maybe oh, she's it, she's um she's amenorrheic a little, uh, she's a little older camilla should be 61 two. Oh, okay. Well, then that's not so much of an issue, but well, but it still could be because if she's athletic, then maybe she's, you know, she's youthful and vital in other ways. Yeah. Um, I'd like to hope that I'm that way in two years when I get there, but, (laughs) um, um, but, you know, so, so her hormones may still be an issue. Um, And, and she may not be having enough fats to engage hormones. Maybe she's even having more trouble making enough cholesterol for the hormones at this age than she was when she was younger because of all her sports. Yeah. So that's yeah. something to look at. And, you know, you know, even just a handful of almonds a day might, and yeah. as you said, some avocados that, yeah. that, you know, and switching her to more complex carbs, that might, that might be all the dietary change she needs. Yeah. And when you say complex carbs, Camille, what um, do you include in that, for instance? Well, I mean, more like like whole grains, um, yams, potatoes, those kinds of things instead of, you know, um, in, instead of instead of sweets, instead of cakes and things like that, um, mm-hmm. having whole fruit instead of juices or dried fruit. Um, you know, again, you, it's, it's about how quickly your body metabolizes it. And, you know, if she's, if she's super athletic, she may be, you know, she may be relying on quick carbs like juices more than she should. Yeah. Yeah, That's actually quite likely. 
yeah. He doesn't consume a lot of um, sweet stuff as, as like cake and stuff. I think okay. it's more the breads and, you know, the pasta type things. Yeah. So the problem well, is that, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. So what happens for people who are very, who are athletic is that they, they do get used to eating things like, so, you know, for some people, pasta and breads um, and the, the whole grain and blah, blah, blah. They're still, you know, so they're not a high glycemic factor, but, you know, because they have more fiber in them, but they're still creating this sort of, they are creating a rush that also because a person who's athletic can eat a lot of um, grains or sugar and sort of go on, go for a run or whatever, and they sort of burned it off. And certainly they're, but what they did during that time is they did affect their hormonal metabolism. You know, because they, they didn't get exactly a sugar high, and and a, you know they, they're not they're going through the process a lot faster because they're burning it off, so it, it, it appears like it's a lot faster. But their hormonal um, um, understanding of the body does get changed. The metabolic understanding of the body does get changed. So I think for someone like that, it is, and it is very hard for people who are athletic because they they really feel that they're not affected. Uh, by carbs and sugar they feel like they can just eat as much as they want like other people are sort of worried oh I'll gain weight I'll do this I'll do you know they're kind of like well I can eat it I you know I go for a run and it's all gone because they're they're looking at it as if it's just calories the problem is it's not just calories it's also it dictates the, the way the body perceives everything else everything else that you're eating so I think switching and again not everybody's going to work for it for example I've tried doing the high fat diets, it drives me crazy. You know, I feel greasy and oily and it just doesn't work for me. You know, I can tolerate avocados, for example. Um, but, you know, coconut oil is just like, I, I can't, there's only so much I can handle. Um, and I happen to be one of those people who can do a lot of sugar and, you know, and because I, I have a relatively athletic, you know, um, um, engagement, I sort of get rid of them very fast, but they're, I can tell you that they're still affecting me. Okay? So I think that often trying to see how much they can move towards some fat in it. Um, and a, a, this is one of the unfortunate parts is that often, and especially for an athlete, the mixture of fat and carbs is gonna come to something like ice cream or cake. You know, it's just like a really, um, you know, uh, or bread and butter, you know, so it, it's, um, it's hard to get people like that to, to really look at other, other fats. Um, just because, we, you know, when you've developed, you know, and I, I can speak from my own experience, you've developed the experience of the, this capacity of just get rid of it. Um, and not think you're not suffering any consequence. You, you've developed certain habits of, of eating and they're really, really hard to, to get rid of because it's not just the eating you're trying to change. You're now changing the mindset around, you know, around eating. So, so it, it's not so easy. Go ahead. Please. The other thing about the pastas and breads is that I'm very adamant with my patients that they do not have a lot of carbs in the evening. Um, because carbs in the evening um, or carbs at rest go through a completely different chemical process than carbs that are burned. And, and a, an intermediary stage um, of the process uh, of, of utilizing carbs and converting them into fat storage, an intermediary step is that we build up... Um, a lot of acetaldehyde, which is a chemical cousin of formaldehyde. And it really pickles your cells and it's very carcinogenic and, and it just wreaks havoc in the body. So I'm very insistent that my patients, um, if they have any meal late at night, that they either walk afterwards or they have a meal that is almost entirely um, without carbohydrate that, you know, they can have a little bit of protein and lots of veggies and a little bit of fat. And that's, that's the evening meal. And, and I really am very adamant that people wake up hungry and have, you know, 
more of their calories at breakfast and lunch, um, and particularly their carb calories. And I find that 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 makes an enormous difference as well. Yeah. Yeah. She and was also, yeah, sorry. She was told that um, by a medic that diet would only um, change by 10%, change her readings. Well, that's ridiculous. <laughs> well, let's let's look at let's see what the diet says rather than what the medics. I mean, it's hard to know. Right. I mean, he, he I mean might... that's that's well. I I mean, I would I my apologies for being so blunt, <laughs> but but um, you know, that's 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 just dogma, and that's just that's you know that's that's just not based in reality. It's not like the body sees the number ten and just whoa whoa we can't go past that level. You know, I mean, it's just doesn't make sense. Yeah. I, I did hear twenty percent myself a long time ago. Um, the diet it would only. Um, Everyone is different. I yeah. think the thing is well. I think that well. I, I think that some of these numbers come from, you know, from good intentions. Um, I think what the, what the person is trying to say, it's a combination of different things. And, you know, and hopefully it's not an, uh, you know, they're not getting an incentive from some pharmaceutical to, to push some, some statin on, on patients, you know, oh, uh, don't worry about your diet or your exercise, just take yeah, the statins. That's what that it, might, like. it might be that, but let's assume that that's not. I mean, there, I think there is some, something to be said don't just change your diet also change your lifestyle so and the thing is sometimes people don't under don't for example with the carbs carbs at night not only you know people sort of you know because I, I know the phenomenon right for myself um the problem with carbs in the evening is that when you start them they never end Okay, and it's different than when you're more active. Okay, so you th you think I'm just going to have this teeny little amount of carbs and it's going to be okay because it's just such a small amount, but then it becomes larger and larger and larger and you keep eating. Okay, so there there is something about so you know is this diet or is this lifestyle? It's both. So you know, this is a person who exercises. So you now you can possibly look into the kind of exercise. Okay, if you're doing non-aerobic exercise, that's not going to be so good for you know for your cholesterol. You know, if if you're basically a weightlifter, you know, and you're bench pressing, that's not the kind of exercise that's going to help your cholesterol. Sorry, but you know, uh, no, this this person now she would uh, kind of does triathlons. She would yeah. run. No, no, I understand. Like, yeah. no, I'm just saying that there's different things. And then again, you know, and sometimes you have to get people, you know, everyone is an experiment in their own way. Yeah. You know, that's why the, the, the answer of 10% is, is, is a little dogmatic because the problem here is that this is a person that may have to look at their exercise routine and when they're exercising and maybe they're over pushing. You know, it's like, yeah, look at me. I'm, I'm a triathlon, you know, kind of person and I can do all this stuff. Like, how come my cholesterol is high? Well, maybe you're, maybe everything is too tight. And therefore, your adrenal system is, you, you're preventing your cholesterol from being utilized well. You know, it's, it's just hard to say. So it's, you know, one has to somehow give them the, the understanding of exper what to experiment with and encourage them to experiment with it. Yeah. That, that, that would be my, you know, but I would definitely try, you know, you know, definitely trying things like flax seeds um, mm -hmm. are worth it. Hoth and berries are definitely worth it, mm -hmm. you know, which is granted as, as a supplement. Um, you know, the, these are things that are definitely worth um, seeing and seeing what you can, I, but I, you know, in your case, there's the one big obvious, um, not, it's not an elephant. It's 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 an obvious one. So it's not an elephant, but it, it's her carbs intake. Is like the yeah. first thing I would look to address. You can't address everything because you don't know what everything is going to be. So to take take the thing that's most outstanding, yeah. and see how you can work with the person, support the person in in being able to change that, um, and then. 
then move on to, okay, so it only got a 7.2%. You know, do we still have 2.8% left or do we have 12.8% left? Who cares? You know, it's like, just start with what you have. You know, you can't know the answer until they've experimented with it. Yeah. Great, I mean, thank you. A lot of good suggestions. Yeah, I hadn't thought of <clears throat> flax seeds actually. Be really one to try. Yeah, definitely worth it. Mm -hmm. My, yeah. my, my, I I forward you my my basic recipe for oh. um, the flax oil smoothie. Um, mm -hmm. You know, people add on, on to that, but I I kind of like to keep it simple. I I find some of my patients they want to put in ten different vegetables and. It takes yeah. them half an hour to do, and then they oh have God. this muddy mess that nobody <laughs> wants to drink, you know. So, <laughs> so feel free to to you know add into this if you like, because I'm sure there are lots of wonderful vegetables that that one could add. But but I I tend to have people keep it simple at first. And bread is not one of them. <laughs> <laughs> not in the smoothie, no. <laughs> Just, no, you know, I, it's always amazing when people say, oh, but it's a smoothie. I should be able to have blah, blah, blah in it. <laughs> it's like, well, just because it looks like it's supposed to be healthy doesn't mean you can add. Yeah. Well, and indeed, you know, people put chocolate and bananas and yes, all kinds exactly. of things in, but that's not the kind of smoothie I'm going for. So anyway, I just, I, you know, this one's pretty simple and fast. Yeah. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Well, enjoy the new year. And, yes, uh, you as well. Thank you both. Thank you. And we'll have another perfect phone call next week. Fabulous. <laughs> Thanks. All right. Thanks, Million. Camille. Thanks, Abby. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.